Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yourinspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do a stash busting project. Maybe you have some Karen Big Cakes at home and maybe you would like to actually try to get rid of some of it and it's a really cool idea and it's really quite practical. So what I have here is in my personal collection I don't have two balls of the same color. So what I did is that I looked at what I have for Karen Cakes and I saw well what well, could be kind of fun going together. So we're gonna be using two strands at the same time. So we're gonna be using the one from here and here and the colors will change on its own to create the marled look. That's what marling means is that you can see that there's different colors and at this particular one here you see there's a stripe that just happened to be that the color of the two balls happen to be the same color at the same time. So that's kind of fun. So it looks intentional but it's actually pretty flukish. So we're gonna begin today and you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook. So it's a small hook so that you have the nice tight uh, uh, fitting for this. If your basket is using a larger hook with this particular concept then the basket may not be very sturdy. So we're gonna begin to do this and there's gonna be rounds one to thirteen as the base and then we're gonna be building up at the sides. So this is kind of neat and let's begin. So let's begin. We're gonna be putting two strands together and pretending they're one strand in order to create marling. Now if you're new to crochet or not familiar with marling if you ever wanted to separate this out for example you've uh, decided that you don't wanna do the project anymore and you wanna start uh, pulling on it and uh, releasing the yarn out. Separating these two plies from each other is really quite difficult and a lot of people get quite frustrated with it. So I would classify that if you're gonna start this then you just gotta to commit to it and then be wonderful. The neat thing about the mar marling I find very addictive is that because the colors are unpredictable it can be a really unpredictable project which is kind of appealing for me. So we're gonna start off with a slip knot and then we're going to begin as we go ahead. To begin I need you to chain four. So one, two, three and four and insert your hook into the beginning chain and I'm just gonna move you over a little bit so you can see better over my shoulder and you're just gonna yarn over and pull through and through. Now you're just gonna let the straggler just fall in front of the project and around the outside of that ring and then we're gonna begin round number one and we're gonna be checking this off. So to begin this one here you are going to then just only um, put eight single crochets into here noticing that there's no chain one that started this. So let's it begin. So you're just gonna go into the ring and start single crocheting. So it's gonna be nice and tight. So one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight. And once you get all the way around it says slip stitch with the beginning. So if you're not sure which one it is just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and the eighth one is where you'll slip stitch it in order to continue. So you just yarn, put, insert in and pull through and through. You're gonna feel everything is nice and tight in your hands. If you were going up over top of those stragglers now is the time to get rid of them, get them out of your way and then you don't have to look at them any longer. And let's move on to round number two. To begin the next round you are going to then chain one and then insert into each one of these um, stitches two single crochets. So there should be eight groups of two uh, based on the stitch count for the last time. So just put two into each. So one and two and then one and two and the way that I count it is that I've just now finished two of them but uh, two sets of two. So what I would do is that I will go in three and three and four. Make sure you grab both of the stragglers or both of them. So we're gonna do four and four. That's five and five. Six and six. Seven and seven and eight and eight and then I just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet to finish and pull it nice and tight. So that was round number two. Let's begin round number three. So going forward in this video I'm just gonna give you the repeats and then let you get all the way around. So here we go. We're gonna chain one and then we're gonna put two single crochet into the first one. So one 
and two and then the next one only has one in it. Okay, so the repeat then is two into the next and then one, two and then one. Please do this all the way around for round number three. When you get all the way around the last one is just one in by itself and that was just because I kept count so it was two and then one and then just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet and let's move on to round number four. Let's begin getting round number four. Chain up one and we're putting two single crochets into the first one. So we have one and two into the first one and then in the next two stitches there's just one each. So the repeat pattern for round number four is two into the first one and then one two and those are on their own. Please do that for round four. Okay getting to the last one and I'm just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. Let's begin on round number five. So chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in the first, or sorry uh, two single crochets in the first one and then the next three are by themselves. One, two, and three. So there's gonna be two into the first one and then three, uh, three, on by the, uh, three all by themselves. Well, I don't know why I'm stum stumbling here. So let's uh, continue this for round number five. So I'm just coming up to the end and I'm just gonna join it to the first single crochet. So, so you're gonna chain up one so and you're gonna put two single crochets in the first one. This is round number six. And in this case then the next four will be by themselves. So we're gonna do one, two, three, and four. Now if I could also show you another tip. See this one here. I don't know if you can see this wall on the camera. See how there's two into the same one? It's the first one of the two that always gets the two double crochets in it. So this will be then two into this one. So one and two and then the next four by themselves and you'll continue in that same manner for round number six. So I'm just coming all the way around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So round number seven and then I'm gonna leave you here at this point and get up to round 13 done. So you're just gonna chain up one and you'll be two single crochets in the first one. So one and two and then you'll have five. So one, two, three, four and five and then you'll put two into the next. So on the next rounds so in number eight there'll be two and then there'll be six in a row and then so on and so on. So just write down at this point, write down the numbers eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12 and, and then 13. So I did this on a sheet for myself so that I can check it off as I go. So let me just put it on my sheet here. And so as I finish number seven I'll check it off and then I'll do number eight, nine, 10, 11. 12 and 13. So I put the stitch counts in there just to verify with myself. So continue this all the way around now for number seven and get all the ways to round 13 done and then we're just gonna start building up on the side. When I last left you we were just building it out and I've gotten to the end of round number 13. So what I wanna show you here is that it has a bit of a ruffle to it so don't worry about it if you have that. The next round we have 104 stitches and we need to get ourselves back to 100, and, uh, to 100 stitches. So it has you counting that you're gonna do the first 23 and then you're gonna put the next two together and then the next 24 and then two together, 24 and two together, 24. Essentially we're eliminating out four stitches so without getting too much detail. So what I would do and I were, if I were you and you were me and you weren't watching me, what I would do is divide this into pie shapes. So go at the 90 degrees. So right here go at, so say this is 12 o'clock so go around nine o'clock it's not too important. The goal is is to get to 100 stitches. So go at nine o'clock here and then come down to six o'clock and put in a stitch marker and then come to three o'clock. Again just eye it up. It's, it's okay. It's gonna work out for you. And then finally come to 12 o'clock. So the last two stitches come together here. So the last two stitches have to come together. So I went second last stitch before the end. 
So what I'm gonna do in the next round is that I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only to create the bend that it needs for the basket to sit flat. And when I get to these stitch markers, I'm going to place that marker plus the next one as two together. And then I'm gonna single crochet the rest in the back loop only. And then again, when I get to this one, I'll do the, the um, six o'clock and the one next door, put it together, together, and then together at the end. So let's begin round number uh, one for doing the beginning of the side. And so all we just need to do is chaining and working in the back loop only. So let's bring you in. So if you're not familiar with crochet at all, if you're looking at the stitch work, the one line here, so together it equals a stitch, but if you come into the front portion only, that's the front loop, and the back portion is the back loop. So starting in the back loop, so I've already chained one, so I'm starting in the back loop only, I'm going to just do one single crochet in each. And this is gonna create, create a lip so that the material will bend. So this will start then working up on the side. And what I'm going to do is then you could either count it like the instructions say. So if you really wanna do that, just go to the instructions to read that. But what I'm doing is that I'm looking for the next time that I'm gonna hit the stitch marker. So let me just quieten up for a moment. So I'm coming close to the stitch marker. I can see it, obviously you can too. And so the stitch marker is the first one I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put the, that stitch marker plus the one next door beside. So just dive right into the next one and then pull up a loop as if you were gonna finish it but just hold it and then go to the very next one, just jam it in, pull up a loop and now you have three loops and then pull through all three and those two stitches just became one. So then you can pull out that stitch marker. So then just keep on going around on the back loops only and every time you hit those stitch markers do the same thing and I'll see you at the end of this first round. So just come all the way back around and put the last two together and I'm just going to slip stitch to the first one. So this will be the last time we're doing the single crochets um, going all the way around this thing and then we're gonna then jump up the sides which will be a lot faster because it'll be double crochets. So just chain up one and apply one single crochet into each of the stitches into the regular stitch and you will see that this line will have appeared underneath like so and that will cause it to naturally wanna bend and that's what we were going for. So please do this round and then we're gonna begin the repeat pattern of three through seven. So I'm just coming all the way back around and then I'm just gonna slip stitch. So rounds number three through seven are going to be the repeat pattern. The reason why we got ourselves to 100 when we did this is that everything's in sets of five. So if you can remember that then you're laughing. Now it does state in the pattern that chain three at the beginning of the next following rounds from three to seven do not count as a stitch. So make sure that you don't think it's a stitch because it's not. So let's have begin to do the repeat then for round number three. So you're gonna chain a total of three. It does not count as a stitch my friends. So what you wanna do and the same one that you did the attaching to is the first stitch. And so you're just gonna look at it and the first time through is that this is gonna be really tight because you got single crochets here but in the future this will be double crochets. So what we have here is one double crochet front post around the next three. So just coming straight in, so just wrap the hook and going into the side of the post and then out the other side. And there's gonna be three in a row. So one, okay, and two, and three. So that's three of a set of five if you can remember that. The next two in a row is going to be a back post. So wrap in the hook coming from the back side into the back and then out the back in the next post. So that, that'll be one and do the next one, the next neighbor. So then in, pull through, pull through two and two. So there is five there. So that chain three just ignore it. So you'll do the next five the same way. So three in the front, two in the back, three in the front, two in the back and you'll do that all the way around. So I will see you at the end of this round. This is round number three and let's get moving. When you get all the way around the last two stitches in this one and round number three is two back posts double crochet. So remember that the chain three does not count as anything. So when you go to slip stitch, you're slip stitching to the first front post double crochet. So just ignore that chain three does not count as anything. See it's just in there just to fill it so you don't see a gap. So you're gonna chain three again and here is the premise of this whole thing which makes it fun. The first one is gonna be a back post double crochet here. 
that we're gonna go and then the next three, so these two that are already front posts plus the third one is gonna be a front post and then the next two are back posts. So essentially the first one of the grouping of three is going to get pulled back to be a back post. So let's start the first one. So let's just do a back post and this is what creates that the um, revolution look. So that's a back post and so these two that are in the front plus this one are gonna be a front post. So it's gonna give it a shift and how it looks. So this back post now becomes front post and now the two next two are, are back posts. So the one's already a back post and the next one here is the beginning of this grouping of three. So the first one becomes a back post to pull it back and now the next three are front posts and then two back posts and then three and two. And you're gonna do that all the way around and you should see the angle of this now starting to work up on its side. Please do this all the way around. This is round number four. I'm coming up to the end of number four. I'm just following the pattern as I know it and coming in and the last one here will be one back post double crochet. And that's just a matter of keeping it so that it is keeping up on its angle. Now you're just gonna slip stitch it to the first back post double crochet. Ignore that chain three and then you carry on. So let's do round number five. You're just gonna chain three and then we're going to start and we're gonna do one back post double crochet around the next two. So it's the first one and the second. One and two and now the next three are front post double crochets. So three. So one, two and three. Okay, so the next two are back and then three front, two back, three front and so you can actually see the angle now working up. Let's uh, continue. This is round number five. So I'm coming up to the end of round number five. I'm just following the pattern as I know it. Pretty exciting stuff and once I get to the last one it's the front post there. There's three and then you're just gonna join it to the beginning back post double crochet. Ignore that chain three. So now round number six. So two more rounds to go before the repeat starts. Chain three. So round number six that we have is one double crochet on uh, the front post around the next stitch. So that you see that there's two in the back post. So the first one becomes a front post and then the next two are remaining back post. So again just shifting over. If you're not sure just look to the pattern and you can see it. There's enough here that you can actually see the repeat. So now the next three are front and then two back, three front, two back and please do this all the way around. This is round number six and now you can really start seeing it activate. It's awesome. So I'm coming up all the way around. The last two here are a front post double because the first one is a front post double so you can see how it goes together and slip stitch it to the first front post double to finish this off. Now round number seven exactly what you already know and this is where I'm gonna leave you on this tutorial and you can go as tall as you want on this particular basket. So number seven here we go and we're gonna do uh, chain three. So one, two, three, two and three. Let me move the instructions back so I can see it. One double crochet front post around each of the next two. So the first one is already a front post double. So it's gonna be this one and then this one that's in the back is gonna get pulled forward. The next two are back post double and then the next three is now we have our right count. So it's gonna be three in the front, two in the back, three in the front, two in the back and you come all the way around. If you do need the tutorial to keep moving along then what you wanna do is you wanna reverse back to the third round and that's where it's gonna pick you up after this round and then you can keep on going. So in the meantime I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to grab a cup of tea and just sit back and let my hook just do the motion and I am going to stop. It's recommending that the basket is 12 inches tall but of course you are the creator and the designer in your life and you can decide if the basket um, for the height what matches you the most. So until next time I will just uh, com come back with a photograph and I'll see you again another time. Have a good one and it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see ya.